Yep, we are live now. Abhinav, you can start. Sure, Dhruvin. Uh, thanks much, uh, all. Good morning, uh, good evening, all, depending on the time zone you are uh, joining here. And uh, we at Delhi Power BI User Group are absolutely delighted to welcome you uh, for our October meetup. And today we have Sandeep with us, uh, who is an eminent Power BI senior architect and has authored few uh, documents and as well as uh, done a lot in this field. So today uh, we'd learn from him about Tableau Editor, uh, which is an essential tool if once you start working with the, the Tableau model and uh, you know uh, move, move from baby steps in Power BI to working as a developer. So uh, stage is all yours, Sandeep, and uh, welcome here. We are we'd be absolutely delighted to learn from you about Tableau Editor. Awesome. Thank you so much, Abhinav. Thank you, Dhruvin, and thank you, Power BI, Delhi Power BI user group. Super excited to be here. So I've presented pretty much everywhere on um, all the continents, except for this is my first Power BI user group that I'm doing um, that's from India. So very excited to be doing this, and thank you for having me here. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so we are going to be super light on um, PowerPoint, and it's going to be all demos, hands-on demos with the Tabular Editor. Okay, so the session for today is Tabular Editor for beginners, um, and the reason why I specifically say it for beginners is because many of you, if you have never used Tabular Editor, I was one of you. Um, I was pretty scared of using it. I didn't know how to use it. Um, and I watched plenty of videos until I understood how exactly it works, um, what, uh, what, what's the importance of it, and how it can help. So my goal today is to show you how to use Tabular Editor uh, with Power BI. We are going to go super slow. Um, and hopefully you can follow along with me um, and then understand why it matters um, and how it's going to help you tremendously in your Power BI development. A little bit about myself. As Abhinav mentioned, I am a senior Power BI architect. Um, I work at Hitachi Solutions America. Um, it, I'm located uh, close to Chicago. Um, and I've been in the data analytics uh, for uh, about 10 years now. Um, but before that, I was a, a mechanical engineer with a, a research and development focus. i um, always worked with the data, uh, but mostly research data. Uh, but about 10 years ago, I pivoted to data science, data analytics. So my background is in data science and statistics and kind of migrated over to uh, Power BI and data analytics. Hitachi Solutions, my employer, they are um, a Microsoft Gold partner, one of the biggest um, consultancy firms that is 100% focused on um, anything and everything that's Power BI, uh, anything and everything that's Microsoft, in fact, not just Power BI. So anything that has Azure in front of it, above it, beyond it, you know, every, anything that's related to Azure and uh, the Microsoft data stack, uh, we pretty much uh, do it. Um, I am very active on Power uh, on Twitter. <clears throat> if you are already on Twitter, feel free to connect with me at Power BI. Easy to remember. Um, and I also write blog posts at uh, PowerBI.com. Again, that should be very easy to remember. But do take a look at it um, and follow me there and follow my blogs there. Um, I uh, I post uh, the blogs um, and Power BI related topics very frequently there. OK, so we're talking about Tabular Editor. Um, and then before we even jump into Tabular Editor, I first want to um, talk about why it's called Tabular Editor. Now, we have audience here that's in Teams and as well as on YouTube. So ideally, this should have been an interactive session. But unfortunately, just because of the way we are doing things, um, I can't really ask questions. So hypothetically speaking, uh, let me ask you a question. Why is it a Tabular Editor? Um, and in the past, when I've presented this session, uh, the, usually the answer is um, because it's a tabular data, if you're not from the tabular world. And you know that answer is probably right. Um, but technically speaking, 
The reason why it's called tabular editor is because we are dealing with a tabular model. And a tabular model um, is nothing but an analysis services. So before getting into um, how tabular editor works, uh, I want to first talk about um, the analysis services part and how that fits into this overall conversation about uh, a tabular editor. So I have Power BI here um, on in another screen. Um, nothing fancy. I have just three uh, uh, three data sources here, three tables here, team customer, product, and orders. Um, not a very big data set, uh, very um, uh, so very basic, nothing going on really. And when we start Power BI and when we Power BI desktop uh, and we start visualizing the data, we go to Power Query and then we can create the relationship, we can create measures, calculated columns, and we interact with the model. But actually what's happening behind the scenes is that we instantiate or, or the Power BI instantiates an analysis services um, server. So let me go ahead and click, uh, go to the task manager <clears throat> and show you. If I expand uh, Power BI here, you will see this is Microsoft Edge, WebView 2, uh, pretty notorious. I did, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been giving a lot of hard ones to uh, many people. But if you'll notice right over here under Power BI Desktop is Microsoft SQL Server Analysis Services. And the reason why it's there is when we start a Power BI uh, Desktop, uh, there are two parts to it. One is actually the, um, the GUI part of it, and then the Analysis Services uh, instance, the server. Um, so Power BI, when you put a Power BI stuff, start the file, it will create an analysis services instance with the database uh, workspace database to hold the data. Um, and when we are interacting with uh, the, the, the objects that are listed here, Power BI is nothing but just the client to interact with it. And the implication of that is because it uh, Power BI is creating this analysis AS instance in the in the background for us. We can connect to that analysis services instance directly. So Power BI, you can think of Power BI as now one of the clients that's actually interacting with that analysis services uh, instance. But the same way we can interact with it using Excel, just like a tabular model uh, using pivot table or DAX Studio, if you're familiar with DAX Studio, or Tabular Editor. Um, so to prove you that we truly have uh, an analysis services instance going on, uh, let me just go to external tools, uh, and we'll talk about external tools, but external tools, and then maybe launch uh, DAX Studio. So it's coming up here on my other screen. But when we do that, you will notice right at the bottom, we have localhost 51620, which is nothing but the server uh, address, so 51620. And we also have the database name. Uh, you'll see a database symbol here. Uh, and my file name is TE session, um, and that's my um, a database name, basically TE session. So we have started a, a server with this address, and then um, this this is the name of the database, uh, a TE session. Uh, so that's a bit of a, a bit of a reason why uh, that matters. The reason why I'm saying telling you all this is because because we are um, we, we are connecting to this analysis services instance. Any changes we make to this analysis services, Power BI can pick it up. If we make any changes using a tabular editor, it will pick it up and it is all interconnected together, which allows us a host of all these different external tools to be used uh, along with uh, Power BI. And, and that's exactly the reason why we are able to use tabular editor uh, with uh, Power BI, okay? So to use a tabular editor, uh, what we will first have to do is install tabular editor. The easiest way to do that is we will go 
and then just search for tabular editor. The, probably the first one you will see is tabular editor three. We are going to focus on tabular editor two. Uh, tabular edit editor three is a commercial version. Uh, tabular editor two is an open source version by the same team, um, but uh, by, Pretty much, uh, I would say 80% of the features are about the same. And for beginner level, um, uh, we will focus on the Tabular Editor 2. When you go to the GitHub page for Tabular Editor 2, um, you will want to go down, look for Tabular Editor, um, and then look for version history, and then whichever is the first one. So I'm right now, this is version 2.16.7. Um, I'm going to click on that. <clears throat> and then right below that, you'll have the download option. So we have Tabular Editor 2.16.7 and a portable version. So the difference between this and this is that this is an exe file. So this is um, uh, an executable file um, that you can install on your machine. And this is a portable file uh, with a zip file. So if you're like a consultant like me, where you are you're working on your uh, client's VDI uh, virtual desktop um, and you can't really install anything. And in those instances, this portable version uh, really comes in handy uh, because you can just download, assuming you have the, the privileges to download files, but you can just download this zip file, uh, unzip it, and the executable will be there. Now, in that case, you won't be able to launch Tabular Editor from um as an external tool uh, but we can i'll show you how you can uh, do that okay uh, so yeah so uh, if you're following along with me hopefully you have tabular editor installed if not the easiest way is to just grab this portable version unzip it um, and then just launch the, uh, the exe file if you do download it <clears throat> you will see under external tools in the desktop, uh, you will see tabular editor right here, and that will pop up automatically um, right here. So we'll click on tabular editor. And as soon as you do that, <clears throat> what it will do is it will connect to, excuse me, it will connect to the same analysis services instance that we looked at earlier. So the name of the file is DE session, and this is the same um, analysis services instance, localhost 51620. Uh, before going into super details about Tabular Editor and features, I think it would be good to just go over uh, the UI a little bit, um, just to orient you. So you're familiar with uh, the overall experience. At the top, you have file. Um, you can click on new model. We won't go into that, but the new model allows you to create a new uh, tabular model. Uh, so if you're familiar with the tabular model, um, let's say you have Power BI Premium. Um, you, instead of creating everything in a, a desktop, you can create a tabular model, publish that to uh, Power BI service as an XMLA and that allows you a lot of flexibility and then you can do lots of different things that otherwise are not possible using desktop. Right below that is uh, open and it gives you two options, open from file and it allows you to open a file. If you notice at the bottom here, there is a tabular model file, bim, um, star.bim. So let's look at that and it's, it's star.bim, JSON and then PBIT. So what this allows you to do is if I go file and then save as remember we are currently connected to this uh, uh, Power BI desktop. I'm going to go to file and then do save as and then go to Delhi Power BI user group and then I'm just going to save this file as my model dot BIM and then save it. OK. This now model.bim file is, you can think of it as exactly the same thing as the PBIT file, the, uh, the, the template file uh, that you can generate in Power BI. So if you go to Power BI and go to file and then save as, and then do PBIT, the template file, 
The difference between the PBIX and the template file is that the PBIT holds just the metadata. It doesn't have any um, data uh, associated with it. Uh, it's only the metadata associated with the file and nothing else. You can think of the BIM file as exactly uh, the same file uh, or same type of a file where it only holds the objects. It's, it's a serialized file uh, with all the JSON objects uh, inside it. Um, we'll do, take a look at that uh, later on, but uh, the reason why I'm showing you that is because when you are working with a Power BI uh, model, it's one of those options that you can you can save the file as a BIM file, and then it allows you to recover that. It will hold all the properties of the tabular model, meaning relationships, the tax measures, the calculated columns, the connections or the data sources you have defined and all of those different things minus um, anything that's related to uh, the color palette or the um, uh, your uh, the theme files and etc. The PBIT will hold that, uh, BIM file will not hold that. Then the recent files, that's really self-explanatory. Um, let's go to edit. I will show you that. View, um, perspectives, and tools. Okay, that's good. So that's all you ha had to know about that part of it. There is one extra option here, save to folder. Um, and I will, that's a little bit advanced, but I will definitely show you that because it, it will, um, you will start looking at Power BI files differently once I show you what that uh, save to folder option does. Now, th the reason why we want to use tabular editor is um, for three for three uh, different uh, reasons. One is because we are making changes to the analysis services. Um, server and this workspace database directly. All those changes are go directly to um, that database. So what happens with Power BI is uh, if you worked in Power BI, you know that when you create a measure, the measure, it will, it will say working on it or working on the measure or something like that, and it will spin, right? If you have 10, 15, if your model is huge, 10, 15 uh, tables uh, in your model, lots and lots of relationships, and then 500, 600, 700 measures. Every time you save that measure, Power BI is actually going to uh, refresh and reevaluate all of those expressions um, in Power BI. And that's exactly the reason why you it, it becomes very sluggish uh, when you have very large data uh, or very large model rather with tabular editor it doesn't suffer from or it doesn't have that limitation when we are making the changes the changes are instantaneous so it makes working with the power bi files and power bi um, uh, the, the tabular object models extremely fast. Um, any changes that you make directly are saved to the database and they are reflected into um, in, in the Power BI file uh, right away. Now I mentioned the three reasons. So the three reasons here are, the first one is tabular editor will allow you to do it will offer the same functionality as Power BI, but because we are not uh, we don't have that limitation of of uh, having to wait for Power BI to actually evaluate everything, all the tabular object model properties. Um, things go faster and it enhances overall productivity. So I classify those features as productivity features because you can do, do those exact same things in Power BI as well, uh, but they will be much faster in um, faster and more efficient uh, in tabular uh, editor. Second thing is um, features that are just not available in Power BI. Um, and we'll look at several of those uh, different features that just because uh, because we are using this tab accessing this tabular object model, uh, it has a lot of functionalities and a lot of different features, uh, but those not all of those are exposed uh, in, in desktop. Um, 
just because the UI is not available. Uh, but that doesn't mean we can't use that. And there are several of those features that we will look at and Power Retabular Editor allows us to use those features um, uh, in here. And the third one is automation. Um, in So that would be similar to using VBA macros in Excel. Uh, so in Excel, you can do lots of cool stuff with the macros. You can think about the exact same thing. Uh, in Power BI as well. Uh, so you're looping over different columns, looping over different uh, object properties and things like that. Um, so that when you are working with an enterprise model, very large uh, model, it can be sometimes very tedious to work with all of those different things. Uh, if you had, And if you did not have a tablet editor, uh, trust me, it would be almost impossible to do any of uh, that stuff. At work, just because we are consult, I work at a consultancy, um, and we work with some of the largest uh, customers uh, in the world, where we handle lot of very complex projects um, that are huge, uh, have a lot of complexities, um, and it's almost impossible to work with those kind of projects without a tabular editor. When you look at uh, the tabular editor, the first thing that you notice here is this uh, tree. Um, well, right up at the top is the name, um, or rather below that is the model. Any Power BI uh, instance, a Power BI desktop file that you create, it will always have this model, and this model, uh, that's the model.bim file. Um, so it starts with that model, and underneath that are all these different object properties. So we'll start from the top and then go our uh, work our way down. At the top, we have data sources. We do have the ability to create uh, new data sources using, um, so we can do that in here, uh, but it's not very, it's, it's not really applicable in case of um, working with the desktop. Uh, models. So if you're working with desktop, you would import your data in the desktop uh, and then launch Power BI uh, or launch tabular editor. If you were creating a tabular model from scratch without Power BI uh, desktop, you can do that um, and create an analysis services model, uh, tabular model, and then publish it to Power BI service, a premium data set basically. Then you do have that ability to do that. In our case, that's that's not uh, applicable. Perspectives, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, as we go down, then we have the relationships. So in our case, uh, in in this model we saw earlier, we have two relationships, uh, many to one relationships that are active. That's exactly the same thing we are seeing. Now in tabular editor, whenever you click on an object, or I should say in tabular editor two, whenever you click on an object, you'll always see the properties. This uh, um, term, uh, these properties are displayed in the bottom right over here. So right now this is showing me that it is uh, active is equal to true. Um, from cardinality is many, from column is this one. It's So it's going from this to this, um, and all the different types of metadata that you typically don't see um, in, in Power BI. Now, if I try to edit this, I'm not able to edit this right now. And uh, the, the reason for that is because when you launch Tabular Editor for the first time, let's go to File and then Preferences, you will see that under features, there is an option called allow unsupported Power BI features experimental. It's turned off and that it's turned off for a reason. Because although Power BI um, official Microsoft documentation, official Power BI documentation um, uses, even they must learn, uses tabular editor, um, it, they, it's, it's not officially supported. So it's kind of weird that um, you know a tabular editor is something that they advise using as pro development tool, but at the same time they short stand they 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 don't go all the way to endorse uh, the product itself. Um, so to use tabular editor, this is just a disclaimer that you will be working with certain some of the unsupported features. So when you turn that on, click on OK. 
Um, now, if I click on this, you will see now these properties are uh, fully editable. Editable. So if I click on this and then go to active right now, the property, this relationship is active. So let me turn that to false. I don't want it to be active and then save the model. Save the changes to the database. When I click here, you'll see that it says save. Save the changes to the connected database, which is our Power BI file. As soon as I did that, um, it it is it grayed out this relationship. I go over to Power BI. Uh, right away, it made that relationship uh, inactive. So let's go back, or let's just do it from here. We'll go here, maybe double click, and then say make this relationship active, and then click on OK. Let's go to here. So now uh, it is active over here. And that is exactly the reason because um, because we are well, we are working with uh, this analysis services uh, instance. Um, we are just using two different clients to access the same exact properties, and that's why it's able to work and do all of these different things. If you want to, you can create a new relationship as well. So always right click um, on some of these things and see what you get. So right click new relationship and it will uh, you know, ask you how we want to do that. Now, to be honest, uh, this is probably the only thing that uh, Power BI Desktop is good at because it's a GUI tool, right? We can just drag and drop um, and then connect the two um, columns together and then create the relationship. Tabular Editor 3 does show you all the, the, the relationship diagram. Um, Tabular Editor 2 um, does not. So I think relationships is probably the only thing that I would do in the desktop instead of in in um, in tablet editor. Let's go down. The next thing you see is the roles, which are exactly the same roles that you would see in. Let's go to modeling and then if you have role level security and if you want to create role level security, you can create it from here or you also have the ability to create those uh, roles directly from here as well. Shared expressions. These are the shared expressions are nothing but let's go to. Transform data. And if I create a uh, new parameter here, uh, let's just call it parameter one and then click on OK. And then I'm also going to do one more thing. I'm just going to right click and then reference and then create a referenced object. And then I am going to disable the load on it. Let's just call it referenced entity. Let's just call it ref. And then I'm going to close and save. And the changes, let's go back to tabular editor. And now you will see that we have the parameter um, and the ref. So the shared expressions are nothing, are two different things. So the shared expression can be a, a parameter uh, in Power Query, or it can be a reference. Um, it doesn't have to be a referenced, but uh, it it will be a query that you create that's disabled in your uh, in your model. So that's what the shared uh, expressions um, shared expressions are. When we go down below that are the tables. And the tables are shown in the hierarchy, so we have tables. Um, we expand the tables down underneath are the partitions and this is the partition and below that are all uh, the columns. So let's start with the tables at the top. When I right click, I have an option to create a new table so I can create a table um, and a calculated table. So we can create a calculated table with an expression that says is equal to um, I think we can create one that is maybe this. Let's try that. Yep, and then we can save that. Uh, didn't quite work. Let's see. Yeah, so the 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 calculated column, but uh, calculated table that we just created, 
if you notice it create it added an fx to that uh, the fx meaning it is a calculated uh, table let me delete that <clears throat> okay let's see what else can we do so we can create a calculated table calculation group we'll talk about that in a few minutes below that are the partitions and when you click on the partitions uh, or let's stay with the table on the table here on the right hand side in the right hand corner below here let's work our way down here so we have the description and then you can add the description property uh, whatever is the description to this uh, then if that table is hidden or not the name you can edit the name and change the name extended property let's go down the data category if this table was uh, some sort of a, a date table for example you would apply uh, the date time uh, to this or time in fact not date time uh, the time to this and that will convert it into a date time uh, date table not date time table date table um, lineage tags frequency set so as you can see there are ton of different tabular object properties that you don't necessarily see uh, in uh, in Power BI, but all of those are available, just not exposed um, uh, in in the Power BI uh, desktop. Now, why would this matter? Um, why do, you do that? Because if you go back to Power BI. If you have to, let's say, change a few things about this uh, table right now, I'm here and I want to um, change things about uh, this table. What you have to do is when you right click, you don't get a whole lot of things. You do get new measure, but nothing related to the metadata that's associated with uh, that particular table. If you do want to do that, you, you click on it and then you go to the model view and then under model view, it gives you all these different properties, right? And then you will enter the description and then you will go to the end row level and then you go to, you know, all of these uh, different things. Instead of that, um, you have the way to directly access those properties uh, in, uh, in tabular editor right over here. Now this may not be very apparent, but let me show you one thing real quick. If let's say, for example, these are my dim tables, right? Um, I want to add some sort of a description to each of, uh, I want to add a description to both of these tables that, hey, this is a uh, dim table um, and it has a description that it is the, this is a, dim table so this is a dim table so i selected uh, the tables that i want to uh, add change and then i started editing it right in this window um, i can select that and i say i can say make this hidden true and then any of the properties that i want to change on this i can do it directly from here when i save this it will get saved when we go back uh, to the desktop we just have to apply the changes and now if we click on it, these two are hidden right over here, right? So that's the that's the beauty of tabular editor that you are able to, that's the productivity, uh, productivity um, I guess advantage of tabular editor that you are able to do all these uh, different things. So let me just go ahead and then right click this and then say make visible. So I want to make sure that these two are uh, visible here. <clears throat> when I right click this uh, table, you we saw that uh, we can create the calculated table and hierarchy and everything. But at the same time, you will see um, that there is this show in perspective, right? Which we saw earlier here. Uh, I said we'll discuss about that in a minute. So uh, this this falls into the second category of uh, thing of features in Tabular Editor, which is features that are not available in uh, Power BI. So you can think of Power Perspective as um, as a 
creating maybe a, a view wouldn't be um, uh, the right word to use here, but you can think of the perspectives as uh, maybe slices of the same model. And what I mean by that is when you're working with an enterprise model, um, it's very highly likely that maybe you'll be working with maybe sales related stuff and then finance related stuff and then marketing related stuff or uh, maybe time intelligence stuff and this stuff, that stuff. And you may have 15, 20 different tables with 10 different, uh, you know, tens of 20 columns underneath each of those tables. And it can get very, very confusing. It can get very, very difficult to navigate all these different tables. That's where uh, uh, perspectives can really help. So what I can do is I can see that right now I'm just working with uh, the products, okay? And I don't really care about them customers. So I can, one, my, one of my options is I can hide it, right? So I can go here and then make it invisible, but it will still, stay there right i what i want to be able to do is i want to hide it completely so that it stays in the model but i don't see it okay you can do that with perspectives so i can right click and say new perspective and let's say this is my product perspective and we created a power product perspective i can select um, dim products and then say show in perspective, which perspective, the product. Same thing here, which perspective do I want to show it in, in the product. And now if I go to products uh, or right at the top, if I, uh, by default, it will say, I am looking at this. By default, it will say perspective, all objects, but I have the pull down menu here, I can select product. And now if you see it hid the the customer table, the Tim uh, customer table, right? You can create as many different uh, perspective as you want to. This also works in um, on columns as well. So I have, uh, let's say for fact orders, what I want to do is only maybe, I only care about, I, when I'm working with the model, I don't really care about the IDs, right? So I can go and then I can right click those and say, select all the IDs uh, and then say, right click, hide in perspective and then product. And now if I go back again to product, you will see that those are hidden in here, right? This allows you to boil down the the, the views um, and then create a very segmented approach uh, to how you develop your um, Power BI desktop and your tabular models. You can always go back to what you want um, and then later on delete this. The way I typically use this is um, when I'm working with things, I just create the perspectives based on the different things of the different parts of the model I'm working in. And at the end of the project, I just uh, delete that. Now there is another, uh, I guess, uh, another benefit of creating the perspectives is you can create uh, these perspectives, hide things, um, and then you can personalize the visuals. I'm not gonna go super details into that one, but definitely take a look at that. If you want to create personalized visuals in Power BI, um, but in the personalized visuals, what it allows you to do is basically uh, give you the ability to uh, for your users to choose um, the columns, right? And you don't want to expose all the columns. In that case, you can create the perspectives and say, I only want to expose maybe, you know, the the unit price um, and discount and hide all the other things and the users will only see that. So we can go ahead and uh, delete this um, and then save the model. Then, um, Below that, uh, so we talked about the perspectives. <clears throat> Let's talk about uh, the batch rename, which would fall into the first category, that's the productivity features. If you notice, I have model dim customers, model dim products, and model fact orders. All of these three begin with uh, the word model in it. And what I want to do is get rid of model um, part from it. I don't want a model. All I want is dim customers, dim products, and dim fact orders. 
if you did not have a tabular editor, the way you would do that is either edit it from here or you would go to Power Query and then edit each of the queries um, and then do that. Thankfully, we have Power BI, a tabular editor. You can select all these three, right click and then say batch rename. So I'm going to batch rename. It will launch this and then it will say, would you want to find, I want to find the word model and then replace it with nothing. I don't want to, I don't want anything and then click on OK. So keep an eye on this side here. Click on OK. So it got rid of all of those models, uh, model word from the names, and now we have these three. Now this is very magical um, because and again, again, obviously we can go ahead and save this and it will save back. This is not working right now because our it showed the dependency on this. So let me go ahead and right click this and delete. And then save, OK? <clears throat> Where it really helped on a recent project was uh, I had a, a customer where we had role playing dimensions. So we have two date tables and in the date table, um, one date table was for uh, ship dates and the other date table was for uh, let's say order dates and for all their columns in um, for all date related uh, uh, columns. They wanted to have uh, there were about 20, 25 different columns, and they wanted to have a uh, ship in front of it. So ship year, ship month, ship uh, quarter, and you know ship everything. And the other one would have uh, uh, the other one would have um, order in front of it. So the way you can do that in Tabular Editor is I wrote a blog post about this. If you go to my blog, um, but the way you would do that is you can use the regex option. So let me highlight this. Uh, you can go to the blog post, this blog post, um, adding prefix. And let me show you how it works. So I can select all these three, right click and then say batch rename. And then this, and I want to say effective, for example, and then use regular expressions. Turn this on, which is right over here, regular expressions, and then click on OK. <clears throat> Could not rename, was invalid, so something went wrong there. So this is the beauty of a tabular editor. If this was in Power BI, I wouldn't be able to do anything here. But because this is tabular editor, I can do Control Z, so which will undo the change. And at the same time, if I go to View or if I go to Edit, and then show history, you will see all the changes that I have made to this model so far. So it allows you to track all the changes that have been made and then um, you can keep doing undo, unlimited undos, and then uh, go back to whatever um, state you were in. Okay, uh, so we talked about the columns. Let's talk about uh, this column, some right over here. Um, and then you will see on the right hand side, we have data type. Uh, we can change the format string right from here. And just like what I showed you earlier, um, let me expand this. <clears throat> One of my favorite features about uh, Tabular Editor is, let me move this over. One of my feature, uh, favorite features about Tabular Editor is this thing here, the window looking thing or the thing with the bars in it. When you click on it, it will it will show you the properties associated with those tables and the column. And this is very, very handy uh, because you can see the format strings um, that are applied to each of these different columns, you which you do not see in um, in Power BI directly, right? Because when I'm working with um, a lot of the, the large models. I want to see which are my um, uh, text columns, or you know, have I applied formatting to um, all of my columns, which I should. Now, in this case, I see that there are some columns that have zeros on them. <clears throat> so I have zero here, uh, another zero here. 
what we can do in uh, in tabular editor is we can use advanced filtering so the way this would work is right here in the filter pane i am going to go to filter pane and i'm going to use something called as link so l i n q so i'll say object type is equal to column and now keep an eye on the left hand side with the op explorer and i'm going to hit enter so enter so now it it filtered everything to just to show me all the columns and then what did i want i i'm going to add a condition that and the format string the format string is equal to 0 let me zoom in so you can see it so i'm saying colon object type is equal to column so give me only the columns and the format string associated with that i want it uh, show me all the columns that have format string that is equal to 0 so let me go ahead and hit enter now we've filtered all the columns um, in a fraction of a second and i can go right here uh, shift so I, I'll, I'll go here and then select everything go to format string get rid of this zero and then save and boom we have edited all those different columns in just one um, in just a couple of steps which would have been almost impossible to do um, almost impossible to do in power bi because first you have will have to you would have had to click on all the different columns to see what the format is and then individually go and then apply those changes. So you can use the exact same technique uh, to do lots of different things. OK, so I think we have what about 20 minutes uh, left or 10, 15 minutes left over here. And Druin, if you are OK, I think I'm going to I will probably have to go over because I still want to show a few more uh, things here. OK, um, if that's not OK, just let me know. Then let's go here. Now uh, the uh, the partitions uh, when I click on it. Uh, so under the partitions, there is a partition. Uh, and when I click you, when you click on the partition, it shows you the. Excuse me, um, it shows you the M. Uh, the, the M code associated with it. Which is just something you can see. You can't really edit it. And the reason being, uh, let's right click here and I'll show you. The reason for that is when you start Power BI, it will start these evaluation containers. Um, if you see all these evaluation containers, those are nothing but the containers where the the queries are processed. Those are like the, in the all all this data is held in and in those containers and it's processed over there. When we are editing the Tom properties, we are just editing the properties. We are not really editing the data and the M code um, there. So we can't touch that. If you do create a tabular model, like if you connect to uh, the, the premium data set using XMLA, uh, then you have to have access to that. You can change it, your M code directly from here as well. Um, you also have the ability which you can't do in Power BI uh, desktop is you can create new partition as well. So we can go here and then create a new partition or I can right click and say duplicate this um, and then create a new partition. Uh, now this is something that you would do in um, for a, using XMLA and then create an analysis services tabular model, um, but that's an advanced technique. Uh, I think you will find uh, several videos on that um, on Cliff's web's uh, blog and as well as uh, SQL BI blog. OK, so we talked about the columns. We can make them invisible, show them in perspective. OK, let's talk about uh, the dependencies um, and what that means. But before that, uh, let's talk about the the thing um, that we usually do in Power BI, which is create um, uh, which is to create uh, the uh, the measures, right? So in Power BI, uh, in Tabular Editor, the way you create the measures is you go and then create new um, and then select measure, 
it will whichever table you are creating it you right click there and it will measure and yes this is a new measure uh, let's call this as um, customers uh, count for example and let's go to count row and <clears throat> now notice here that while i'm typing this i don't get any intelligence here right uh, which is a big limitation of tabular editor too. We can't really get IntelliSense. However, there are three things that will um, that uh, that will convince you that this is a better way of um, writing your measures. Now you use Tax Studio to uh, evaluate your your measures, create your measures, but you can't really save it to your uh, Power BI desktop, right? So you would fire up your uh, tab DAX editor, um, create your measure there, but when you want to save it, you will come here and then save it direct uh, in here, okay? So what I want to do is I want to count rows on this uh, dim customers, right? So I'll go ahead and count rows, but I, I, I don't get IntelliSense, but with tabular editor, what you can do is a drag and drop. So what do I want to do with count rows? I want to do count rows on this table. So I'll just drag it and then drop it, which is pretty cool, and then uh, do it here. When I hover over a DAX function and then press F12, let me go ahead and press F12. It's gonna... Uh, and then press F12. Okay, is it launching? Yeah, so it launched it in another window. So let me do it one more time. Okay, why is not that working? Okay, let me make sure it is turned on and for DAX is Maybe it is my, let me try one last time. Or you know what, let me save this first. Oh, that's why, so I did not have an S. Um, so count rows, so when I go here and then press F12, it launched my browser, which I'll bring right over here. And it will go directly to tax.guide, the SQL BI website, uh, tax.guide. And then I can look at the documentation right there if I'm not 100% sure, um, and then get my uh, read about the DAX function there. You also have the ability to do something very cool. So let's um, maybe, so let me, let's go here and then say, values and then drag it over here okay through the point okay when i am um so i did the values here which is small um and if you've heard uh, from uh marco and alberto they always say if it is a dax it has to be formatted right so we click on this format dax and it will make it formatted when i click on uh, when i hover over the table name here model dim customers and then click on this little thing here watch what happens on the left hand side i go here and then click on this notice it jumped right over to model dim customers okay if i want to go back where i started so i started with the dax expression if i want to go back i will click on this thing over here Okay, this uh, browser button. I'll go here and it will take me back to this. And the where it really helps is when you are debugging a very complex DAX measure and you are not 100% sure how, where it is coming from, or you know, take me to that uh, table where it's coming from, You it will help you uh, directly jump from your DAX over to your table um, or to a column. It works with the column as well. So I have, I, I, have, uh, I took my cursor over to model dim customers and then clicked on this, right? If I go to first name and then click on navigate to symbol again, it will go to the first name column. 
And then if I want to go back, uh, just click on this and it will go back right there. So where this helps is uh, being able to jump uh, or identify the dependencies and then jumping right over to that. So if I'm debugging something, um, a DAX measure, uh, and I, if I just want to go and then do something and identify where it is, then this is a very quick way to um, navigate uh, and then jump from uh, all of these different dependencies. You also have the ability to identify the the, uh, the dependencies. So when I right click and then show show dependencies, it will show me the dependencies uh, where it's coming from. So right now this is showing this is a new measure and it is a dim customers. It's in dim customers um, and it depends on the dim customer um, model dim customers uh, column with and that column is it. It also uh, uh, works the other way as well. So if I right click this and then show dependencies, it will show me the dependencies that starting from dim customers, meaning it starts with dim customer and everything that's dependent on dim customers. Notice it also gives you the relationship because that's an object property. Um, so it also tells us that there is a relationship that, step, that depends um, on this uh, table. Uh, I showed earlier about the measures. You can always if I do something like this um, and if you click on format DAX, it will format the DAX and then you can save it. And your DAX will be um, uh, formatted. If you have lots of different um, measures and the way I can find my measures is I go here and if I look at this or let's just use the link, I can go here and say object type is equal to measure and so I have only one measure right so let me uh, just duplicate this measure and create a bunch of different measure duplicate this measure so I just created a bunch of different measures all together in the same table you can create <clears throat> folders so we can right click this and say add to a display folder and then this is my measures folder now in power bi you can create the folder as well but it's very tedious to create um uh, it's, it's very tedious to create subfolders so if you want to create uh, these two you'll have to go to the the, the model view and then um do another uh, branch there in in the folders, but here you can just right click again and then say display folder. So now I have major folders within a folder within a folder. You can do the exact same thing for your um, columns as well. Um, and then show for your columns, select and then create and display folder and add it to your um, folders. When you want to delete it, you can delete the folder um, but you can also go here and then move it to the top and it will delete it. So let me show it one more time because this was a little bit confusing to me. You have uh, this uh, model dim products and I have new folder, right? Um, and under new folder, I have all of these uh, columns. If I want to delete this folder, you can right click. There is no delete folder. There is a delete column, but there is no delete folder. Um, if you want to delete that folder or you want to get rid of it, you select whatever is underneath it, <clears throat> grab it, and then go to go back one step up. So in my case, I want to go all the way back to the model um, or this table. So I'll grab it and then drop it onto the table and it will get rid of that um, folder right there. Okay. So we are right on time here, 1030. So I'll just take 10 more minutes <clears throat> to show something that's probably the best part about uh, Tabular Editor. Yes, and if you can go ahead. Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, so the, the last part that I really want to show is uh, this. Um, the scripting part of it, um, and then that's where the automation uh, comes in. So we looked at, uh, we were here, uh, and then we were looking at, um, uh, so we looked at this uh, using the link features in here 
to dynamically identify and filter through all these different things. But <clears throat> let's say you want to um, automate some uh, some things, right? You can use C sharp. Now I'll be the first one to here to admit that I'm not a programmer. I don't know anything about uh, C sharp. Uh, I barely know things and I only know things that are related to tabular editor. And the only reason I know that is because you can go to tabular editors website and there are a bunch of scripts uh, that are written or provided there. Um, and in fact, I think one really cool place where you can go is just search for um, Power BI tips uh, the scripts and I think hopefully it will do. yeah so power bi in fact let's use one of these so power bi tips uh, if you go to their github page and then go to basic for example there are uh, lots of different scripts so let me just take one that might be the best to show here um Okay, new call implicit measures. Okay, that's a good one. So let's take this and then I'm just going to uh, grab all of this, copy, and then go here. Okay, so in Power BI here, uh, let's add some summarizations to a few things. Oh, you know what? I think I know the reason. Uh, this, okay. <clears throat> so in Power BI, so good that this happened. So in Power BI, um, you can always add the uh, add the summarization, right? So if I select this line total, and the summarization I want up to apply to this is sum. Um, for this one, uh, there should not be any summarization. But notice right now it's not showing me anything, right? Um, usually you will see that sigma symbol right in front of it. Right now it is not showing this. And the reason for that is because if I go to Power uh, Tabular Editor, go to Model, and then go right over here, Discourage Implicit Measure, that is turned on. If I turn this to off, turn this to false, and then save it, go back to Power BI, you will see that uh, I can see it right over here. So where this helps is um, you should always uh, turn off the summarization, default summarization, right? Uh, that's that's the best practice to, to use because we don't want our uh, users to apply any summarization that's incorrect. So always turn that off. Um, so the one quick way of doing that is you can click on model uh, and then go to discourage implicit measures and turn that on to true and it will discourage meaning it will remove any summarization. So no matter what you do in Power BI, you won't be able to apply any summarization, which in my opinion is pretty really awesome. But let's assume that you did not know that, right? Um, and you just looked at this script. Uh, what you can also do is just grab this and then where we were in expression editor. So expression editor allows you to use the DAX uh, or create the DAX, whereas the advanced scripting here, um, we can go here and just put this C sharp script. All this is doing is saying for each column in the table, go and then turn the summarization by uh, summarization by to none. OK, I mean, easy to read, right? So I will go here and then I am going to click on this triangle thing and then just run and it just went through and then save it. And now if we go back to Power BI, it's all turned off. And this is despite the fact that we have um, put the the discourage filters or uh, we do not have discourage filters here. So now you can see how powerful uh, this is, right? Um, one thing that I recently used this, uh, the C sharp scripting, I mean, I use it. I have a bunch of these handy, uh, but let me show you one that I, I absolutely love is. Imagine you are working on a model 
um, and you have these. Let me create new measures here. Create new measure and then create new measure. So we have all these different measures, right? That are uh, created. And what I want to do is um, I want to grab all these measures and then save it somewhere one. And I also want to add some description to it, but that description maybe comes from your user business user. It's not something you do or maybe it is the table that that's something that your user would enter, not you. In that instance, what you can do is go to the advanced scripting and then we'll say model dot. See when I press dot, it gave me all the different things, the attributes that I have access to. So I'll see model dot all. What do I want? Model dot all measures. And what do I want from all the, all the measures? I want to export the properties of model dot all measures. <clears throat> and I want to see an output of this. So let me zoom in a little bit. So I said model dot all measures. So give me a model dot all the measures of this model and export properties of this and show me the output. OK. And if I click on this run script, now you will see that it gave me um, the uh, this. I can copy this and then go to Excel, for example. By the way, you can do the exact same thing in using DMVs in. But I'll show you in a minute where this is super helpful. Now you have this, right? You can grab all the measures that are in your model. You can give this to your business user. They can add the description, whatever the description is. And then save it, send it back to you. And they're just like export properties. There is an import properties and you can say import properties, read file that CSV file and then apply it back to all the different uh, measures you have. And it will take that and import it back into your Power BI, um, uh, apply that to your tablet object model. So this is a pretty handy way um, of doing things. This will work exactly the same way if we had measure dot all columns. So if I do measure dot all columns, and then click on this. You will see now it grab uh, the properties, the metadata properties of uh, the properties, which are all of these properties. Um, you can grab that and then um, do the output. Now, if you want to save this, you can also do save file uh, and then save file this file and then where do you want to save it? And then you can give the location um, and then run this script and it will automatically save all the properties. Now, as you can see what I did earlier, when I go to model dot, you can um, you can access all the different properties associated with the model. So now you can access the properties of all the different tables, the partitions, the measures, the columns, uh, the relationship. So anything that you have, you can uh, that's associated with this. You can pretty much access that, edit anything you want, save it to your heart's content, and uh, you know to just um, use it. So as you can see, it really allows you to uh, allows you to uh, manipulate all the small details about the uh, the tabular object model and the uh, the Power BI file. And this is super helpful, especially when you are working with very large enterprise type uh, projects where you don't have a lot of time and you have lots of different objects that you have to uh, work through. So definitely take a look at this. Um, uh, these scripts. <clears throat> the very last thing is there is something called as. A, a, Best practices analyzer, which I am pretty sure you may or may not have heard about. I don't know, but if you go to if you just Google best practices analyzer um, and just scroll down, this is by Michael Kowalski. He is the PM on uh, in the CAT team. Just select this script and then go to your tabular editor in advanced scripting and then run this. And once you have run this, 
basically it will uh, run different rules. So in my case, for example, it gave me all these different best practices that have been violated, which are suggestions that I should take a look into. So right now this is showing that do not use floating point data types. If I agree with that, I can right click and say Gen apply the fix and then it will apply the fix directly to that. So I do not have any floating point. It converted everything to whole numbers um, and it did not have any floating point. So take a look at that. Um, so in a nutshell, like I said earlier, there are three primary reasons why you want to use tabular editor. The first one is there are is the productivity because it will let you do things that otherwise uh, will take very long time to do in Power BI Desktop. Second, features that are not available or accessible in the Power BI uh, at all. Uh, you there are available, but they are just not exposed in Power BI Desktop. And the third is the automation part of it, uh, where you can do uh, the automation and do things that are uh, very easy to do. You can always save the scripts that I uh, showed you earlier. So the one that I showed you earlier, for example, um, so let's just do selected um, and then export properties. So I did this right. So export properties and then let's say output and then run this. Let me show you real quick. So this gives me the properties, right? If you want to access this uh, next time, all you have to do is just save on this plus button here. And then it will open this and then it will ask you what is this associated with? So this is associated with a column and I'm going to name this something something, right? Um, and then the way this works is that once you have saved this as a script, it is now accessible to you by right clicking custom actions um, and then you can add different things. So with the one that I created, for example, is in tabular editor, you cannot see the the you cannot see the the table itself, right? You only see the metadata, but you can create run DAX, DAX scripts as well. So I can right click custom action and show top 10. So this is a quick way to uh, see the the data directly in a tabular uh, editor uh, as well. So I could probably go on for another two hours um, on this topic, uh, but I think we are at a good point uh, to stop here. So hopefully it gave you a, a good understanding as to why tabular editor matters and how it will help you in your Power BI uh, development. So I really hope that you took something away from this and you'll be able to use it in your next project. Awesome, awesome. Uh, thanks so much, Sandeep. This it's been a really a great session, and uh, Thank you so uh, much. the way you described and it was completely hands-on. That was the good part of it. We could see uh, everything happening there live, and there were many people who joined. Uh, the winner send across the stats. Uh, many people joined across YouTube and uh, okay. uh, were part of this, uh, watching this live. And uh, we, I do not see any audience questions yet, but I'm sure once mm -hmm. they get hands-on, download it, and work through it, they'll have plenty. So sure. uh, we we'll, like uh, that uh, YouTube uh, session remains uh, available, and once people come in with questions, we can probably ask them to post them to you or help them uh, help answer those questions. So absolutely, uh, we really yeah. And feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. <clears throat> especially Twitter. I'm not much active on LinkedIn, uh, but definitely on Twitter. Um, feel free to reach out, uh, follow me, um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Sure. Thanks so much, Sandeep. And this was, Thank you again uh, for the opportunity happy and a belated happy Diwali to everyone. I hope everyone had a good, joyous, happy Diwali. Bye. -bye. Thanks so much, Sandeep. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tom. Thank mm -hmm. you.